The landscape of the Brecon Beacons has provided inspiration for many an artist over the years. But this week, it's the mountains of North Wales that have inspired Rupert Moon. The last time I picked up a paintbrush was when the garden fence needed creosoting. If I have an artistic streak in me, well, it's well hidden. But thanks to the wonders of television, we have one of Wales's best-known landscape artists to come and help me try and find it. We'll see. My mentor for the day is Peter Prendergast. Peter's distinctive style has won him international recognition and exhibitions at the Tate and the Royal Academy. Today, though, he's closer to home, Den Yolin, near Carnarvon, offering advice to local artists in readiness for the Gulbenkian Welsh Art Prize, a landscape competition for contemporary Welsh artists. The starting point I'd like to be is observation, and I think I'd like it to be by drawing, in its simplest form, because by drawing the landscape is forcing you to look at it and is forcing you to understand how it's constructed. So there's no coaching manual, there's no way, right way or wrong way. The clear way is simply to look and let the landscape absorb you and you, and you absorb it and for you to make as many clear marks as you can to try to describe what you can see in the most energetic, inventive way. At first, it's not so much the landscape as my easel which is absorbing all my energy. Part of today's lesson, apart from easel construction, is about experimenting with the tools of art. Even mud from the hillside is fair game as far as Peter's concerned. So in a sense, the first rule for me is not to worry about any rules. The techniques and delicate touches are for another time. All I want you to do is to look at what's there and put down the first response that comes to your mind. Don't you worry about what it looks like, right? You just respond to what's there. You're a tree with a clump of dirt. <laughs> I had in mind a palette and a nice chair, but painting turns out to be quite dirty work. We're not just painting the landscape, we're standing right in it. And some are even smearing it on their canvases to try and find a different way of presenting it. Instead of being predictable, you're making marks, yeah. unlike you made before. So what you're doing now, you're beginning to, to make your own kind of images. Yeah. But don't just deal with the safe bits up there. No. Try to work in the middle ground. The hardest bit to work on often is what's right in front of you. All right, folks, can you all bring the pieces of work you're working on and walk up towards me with your drawing boards? and the drawings. Come on, don't worry about the mud. Remember Gareth Edwards, great try. Come on, Roy, I thought you were fit. I'll put the drawing on there, this way. I'll put it in the middle. The reason why we made drawings like this, why I said you just use anything which is around you, I knew that you'd have no kind of preconceptions. You wouldn't know what you could do with a bit of earth. Although, after all, all Earth is, it's, a bit of, it's what we make paint out of. Mix oil with that and we've got oil paint. Somebody might look at them and say, a whole load of scribbles. I mean, there are painters in this area who paint this landscape and they paint every house in the same kind of way, every chimney pot, every cloud, every fox, in the same kind of way, to a system. What you've done is to begin to work without a system because you didn't really know what you were going to do. Good drawing and painting comes from being energetic but also being thoughtful. Right, you, for example, you can't play rugby if all you're going to do is just take on the pack. You've got to use your nose, you've got to learn to kick, you've got to know when to pass. Now, it's better to have a terrible mess than to have something safe. I managed the terrible mess, so I've mastered stage one. Now to develop things. Work from your feet upwards, so you're using every part of your body, so you're calling on every bit of energy that you've got. From the feet. Just keep checking the landscape. Keep, keep checking the, what you see. Peter himself has built a reputation not only on technical skill, but on the feeling in his landscapes. It's that feeling he's tried to open our eyes to. And once you get used to the fact that you're not going to give Monet a run for his money, this approach to art does begin to grab you. Peter may not thank me for the parallel, but for a beginner like me, it's a bit like karaoke. You won't really get the enjoyment out of it unless you give it everything and don't worry what other people think of the end result.
at the end of the afternoon, it's time for us to bring our paintings and drawings together, an impromptu exhibition. And some of the quickfire efforts are quite impressive. Mine's not going to win prizes, but that was never the point. So, Rupert, having spent the day, you're now doing something which you wouldn't normally do. What do you think you've got out of it? Well, you have to believe in your instinct, and otherwise you're just not going to enjoy it. And I enjoyed it once you told me to believe in my instincts. The idea was to produce an individual piece of work, which is what you've all done, every one of you. And although some of you are saying, oh, I don't want that painting, I'm not going to take it home, I think you'll find in a couple of weeks' time when you look at it, it'll begin to sort of release other kind of feelings to you and memories of the particular day and the particular place, and that's smashing. Every one of you, Rupert included. Details of the Gulbenkian art competition and similar courses from a tabernacle in Machantleth will be on our helpline. <laughs>